All right, guys, hello again and welcome to G Squared Academy, where you know excellence is, as usual, epitomized. And you know, this is where we simplify things for you. So we take these complex concepts and we put them to you in a simple way so you can understand, you know, what's going on and that you can use these things. Right. So as you can see on the screen there, we're going to be looking today at atomic quantum numbers and uh, this thing is a little bit tricky for a lot of people because i mean you know it's so mathematical and it's so intense cognitively so a lot of people don't really grasp the idea of the atomic quantum numbers but hey that's why g squared academy is here just to simplify those things for you so let's get right into it don't they to just understand a little bit better about the quantum numbers we're just gonna say a little bit of history story here. So we're looking at the development of the atom, right? Um, or the atomic structure, really, and how scientists worked out the structure of the atom to its present form today. And uh, one of the things is that it was identified that there were three subatomic particles. You have the protons, gonna, which I'm going to denote as P here, right? You have your protons, and you have your neutrons, and you have the electrons. Okay, so you have your protons, neutrons, and electrons. It's established that the protons and the neutrons are inside the nucleus, and we know a fair bit about them in terms of their properties. But the big thing was the electron. A lot was not known about the electron, and, and it seemed a little bit tricky, and it, um a little bit confusing in terms of how we are going to describe the electron. And so Schrodinger came up with an equation to describe um, the electron. And from that equation, we find out that there is an area in an atom where there's a high probability of finding an electron. And that area where there's a high probability of finding an electron, we call it an orbital. So now the idea was then to describe certain things about the electron within this orbital. What can we say about the electron in the orbital? And so that um, birthed the idea of quantum mechanics in that context. And so the electron is um, described by three, four to be technical, quantum numbers. You have the N, which is the principal quantum number, and we're not going to get into the semantics now, the naming issue. Um, we're not concerned about what they're called. We're more concerned about um, what they really mean. So you have the N, which is the principal quantum number. And what this really shows is the energy of the electron. It tells you the energy of the electron. Now, energy can't be negative. Um, a negative energy, I would say, is a social construct, right? And you can't have zero energy in terms of the electron. The electron must have some form of energy. And so the principal quantum number, N, must have whole number values. So one, two, three, etc., etc. Okay? So it must have whole number values, right? Um, and it can't be zero, of course. Then, no, they went on further. So basically, and just to add a little bit more to that, they basically, the energy level tells you the number of the shell. Is it first shell, second shell, third shell? And if you look on the periodic table, it really gives you the period number, period one, period two, period three, or that is where you have the electron being located. The second number that um, quantum number, which is used to describe the electron, remember we're describing the electron, is the the um, orbital angular or azimuthal quantum number. And as I said, we're not getting into the naming. So basically, this quantum number tells you the angular momentum of the electron. But what does that mean when it tells you the angular momentum? That's just a lot. But really what it tells you is the shape of the orbital. The orbital. So L tells you the shape of the orbital that the electron is found in. And by the shape, you can tell the type of orbital. And so therefore, L tells you the type of orbital that the electron is present in. Okay, so that's what the L value tells you. Then now you have your ML value, which is the magnetic quantum number. Right. And of course, again, this is a mouthful. And what this tells is the movement of the electron in three dimensions. Or it could also tell you the number of subshells. But what does this really mean? It just really means it tells you the direction in space that an electron is moving in within a certain orbital. 
Okay, so that is your ML. The ML tells you, I'll just move this out of the way. The ML tells you, right, the, um, the direction that an electron moves in in space. And because it tells you there are only certain allowed directions, it actually tells you the number of subshells or suborbitals. Okay? So we'll call it suborbitals here. Right? So that is what the ML tells us. And of course, there is the spin quantum number, which really tells you um, the direction of movement as well. Um, of the electron in three-dimensional space. And just to say about the MS, which is the spin quantum number, they're allowed to have values of plus a half or minus a half, okay? So it just really means that if you have two electrons in an orbital, they must have opposite spins. That's really what the MS wants to tell you because electrons are negatively charged so if they are in moving in the same direction there's going to be quite a lot of repulsion okay so that is where your um, quantum numbers come from they are describing the electron so now let us look at a few examples right so i did mention that n must be a whole number so let's say n is equal to two what are the allowed values of L? Notice I say the word allowed because based on the quantum mechanics, only certain values are allowed. So now the L values, based on the, the laws, says that L can only have values up to N minus 1. All right, so N in this case is 2, so 2 minus 1 is going to be equal to 1. So our L values will go up to 1. So starting from zero, so our L values will be zero and uh, the next one would be one. There you go. All right. So those are our L values. Now, what are the ML values for these? And what do these values mean? So remember now, N is the principal quantum number, right? That gives you the energy level. So in this case, the energy level is two. At energy level two, we have two associated L values. And remember, we said the L values gives you the shape of the orbital or the type of orbital. Now, the situation is if your L value is zero, then it means that represents an S orbital. Okay? You can only have one value for that, zero. Okay? So that represents an S orbital. If your L value is one, this represents a P orbital. That's great. Now, let's look at the ML values for these. Okay, the ML values for these. Your ML values, based on the quantization, says that they must go from plus L to minus L. So, in here, L is zero. From plus zero to minus zero is still zero. So, you have an ML value of zero, so that's one ML value there. For M, when L is equal to one, your ML values go from plus L to minus L. So it's from plus one to minus one. So we're gonna get minus one, zero, and plus one. Now, if you remember what I said, the ML value tells you the direction of motion of the electron in three-dimensional space. In other words, it tells you the number of orbitals, the number of allowed directions that the electron can move in in three-dimensional space. So what this is telling us is that when L is equal to one, it's an S orbital and there's only one, let me just change the color here, there's only one S orbital. When L is equal to one, there are three P orbitals. Remember we said when L is equal to one, there it's a P orbital. So L, when you have, um, when L, L is equal to one, you're gonna have three P orbitals. And this is where we get our PX, or PY and our PZ from, right? That's where we get those things from, okay? So that is how we get these numbers. No, I'm just gonna erase this. And let us look at if L, N is equal to three. What do we get from when N is equal to three, all right? So here we go now. So N, get back that right there. Okay, good. So N is equal to three, 
okay? What are our L values? Remember now, our L values must go up to N minus 1. So we can have 0, we can have 1, we can have 2. Wonderful. Now, we already established those numbers for um, L is equal to 1 and L is equal to 2. So what would our ML values be for when L is equal to 2? Remember, it goes from minus L to plus L. So our ML values for M is equal to 2 would be minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. And what's this telling us? This is telling us that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 orbitals or subshells under the category of 2. But what does 2 represent? So when L is equal to 0, it's an S orbital. Let me change the color. This is an S orbital. When L is equal to 1, this is a P orbital. And when L is equal to 2, guess what? It's a D orbital. So this now tells us that there are 5D orbitals. And that's where we get that information from. 5D orbitals. In other words, there are five regions in space or five directions in space that the electron is allowed to move based on the solutions to the Schrodinger wave equation. And there you have it, guys. This is what the quantum numbers really mean. And this is how we work out really the number of shells, the number of subshells, etc., within um, an atom or based on the electron and its energy or its principal quantum number. All right. All right. So I'm hoping that you guys have found this helpful. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. You know, we really appreciate those comments from time to time. So all the best and I'll see you guys next time.